Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today I figured we'd hop back in the F-16C Fighting Falcon and do a new Cold Start tutorial. Now it's been almost a year since my last Cold Start tutorial video in the F-16, and a lot has changed, and looking back at that video, it was really subpar content from my standard, and uh, so sorry about that guys, but uh, this is why I'm going to rectify it with this video, and it's going to be a great uh, lesson for you new guys who are just picking up and running with the F-16C as of right now. There have been a lot of awesome new additions, such as the AGM-65 Deltas that we've got on our right wing, and we've also got an AGM-88 Charlie Harm on our left wing. So let's go ahead and hop in the cockpit here, get that canopy closed nice and quick, so that way we can get out of the rain and get started with our mission, engaging Russian and Syrian air defenses in the north of Syria that are around the area where the YPG is fighting Syrian ground forces. So let's go ahead and hop in our Turkish Viper and get started. So we're here in the cockpit, and we can see, of course, it is a very high overcast with uh, some pretty steady rain. So let's definitely get that canopy closed as quickly as possible. So I'm going to use left control and C on my keyboard just to close the canopy nice and quick. You want to keep pressing and holding that right left control C until you hear the canopy motor disengage automatically. Next, we want to lock the canopy with the locking mechanism right here. Clicking that will also get it out of the way of your dispensers and raw controls down here on the left uh, panel. So um, keep in mind, guys, that you do not ha need to have the battery turned on to operate the canopy in the F-16. There's two reasons for that. One reason, of course, is if there was an emergency and I was trapped here inside my cockpit, the ground crew can access the canopy and open it very easily, even with a total electrical failure inside the airplane itself. Second fold, the ground crew needs to be able to open and close the canopy during maintenance and maintaining the jet without draining the batteries of the jet as well. So we'll go ahead and get started with the rest of the tutorial here. First thing you're going to want to do is locate the uh, main power switch. So that's going to be this switch right here that's just aft of the throttle. You're going to want to bring that switch into the battery position. You know it's in the battery position when you hear what sounds like a VCR rewinding and you see some yellow caution lights light up here and here, and you will also get a yellow caution light for the electrical system down here. So you know it's in the correct position there, and now all we gotta do is come to the jet fuel start switch just forward of the throttle. All you gotta do is give it that one right hand click, bring that into the start one position, and now you'll start to hear the jet starter cartridges fire and start to turn over the engine. We now need to bring our attention over to the engine gauges just to the right of the right hand MFD. Once that reaches 20% of RPM, we can go ahead and go right shift and home key to bring our throttle out of the idle cutoff detent and up into the idle detent. You can now hear the engine start to spool up and we can see the RPM gauge rising. Once we hit about 55% on the RPM gauge, we can see that the jet fuel start switch, which is spring loaded, automatically moves back to the off position. And once we hit 60% or above, and the TIT is stabilized at about 375 to 400, we can know that our engine is now fully turned on, and if we wanted to, we could push the throttle up and take off right now. Of course, we definitely don't want to do that. We need to actually get all the systems of our jet online and ready to go. So next thing we're going to do is we're now going to come back to our main power switch back here, and we're going to push the main power switch up one more position with a right click up into the main power position. That will allow electrical power to flow to all of the avionics systems, and now we have to turn on the actual avionics systems themselves. We now come down to our right hip, just right here to a large bank of switches down here called the avionics power bank. We want to then turn on all of these switches, save for the map switch. You can turn it on if you want, but it will not do anything. That is a leftover switch from older uh, Block 30 and 40 F-16s that had moving maps in them. 
with the upgrade to the F16CM standard with the CCIP upgrade, this switch no longer has a function because it meant that the aircraft was upgraded to a standard avionics suite to allow for ease of pilot training, maintenance, and other functions like that. Next, we want to take our INS and we want to start our INS alignment. We have two options that we can choose from, stored heading and normal alignment mode. We want to actually use, in this instance, stored heading. That will allow for a faster alignment, but not quite as fine of alignment. It's using the last known heading in the jet to actually move and line the INS around that last stored heading, such as if the jet here on the transient ramp was shut down right here in this position, and now we're starting it back up, it will then start to align off of this initial pos uh, last position that it had in the INS system. So that will work for 99% of DCS World flights in the F-16, but if you're gonna be flying a very, very long range mission, such as all the way across the map, doing a bunch of combat, a couple air-to-air -air refuelings, you may wanna go into the norm position and get a more um, fine INS alignment that'll last for a longer time without degrading. Now when we put the INS alignment switch into stored heading or into the uh, norm position, we will start to get the INS page up here on our DED. The DED will start to count down until it is ready. When it pops up with ready, you can, in theory, put the navigation switch or the INS knob into the nav position and then actually take off and fly on your mission and be able to navigate. However, I highly, highly, highly recommend you wait until the INS countdown gets below 10 and you get a flashing ready indication showing the INS is as, as aligned as it possibly can be and it's ready to go for you at that point. Just like that, it is now flashing ready. So I'm actually comfortable now with actually putting the INS alignment switch over into the nav position. Like I said earlier, you can throw that to the nav position anytime it says ready, but you'll have a much more degraded alignment without having as precise of navigation as you can possibly have. Next thing we want to do down here by our right hip is of course turn our mids LVT to the on position. That allows for transmissions to be um, had from the aircraft to other aircraft around us, ground positions, things like that, such as Link 16 radio transmissions, uh, MIDS data transmissions, things of that nature. So we we'll always want to have that to be on position, so that way we can IFF targets, we can use data link, and we can of course use our radios. Next thing we can do is we can come up to our lighting panel. It's not a super dark day, even though it is overcast and raining, but let's go ahead and turn on some instrument panel and console panel lighting. We can also adjust the brightness of our DED as we see fit. And so I like to usually, during the daytime, have that brightness all the way turned up. We can also use some flood lighting. They're not very effective right now because it is a bit bright outside. And then we also have some instrument panel flood lighting as well. Can just barely see it with how bright it is right now. Next, moving forward, we have the seat not armed um, warning and the electrical system warning. We can blank out the electrical system warning by coming back to our main power uh, switch over just after the throttle and hitting the caution reset. We know that the aircraft is good to go with its electrical system. Things are turning on. I'm not worried about that. So we can go ahead and reset that caution. We're going to wait until we till arm our ejection seat until just a little bit later. Now, when I first got into the F-16, something that was a little bit um, tricky for me is I thought that this knob right here on the ICP was the brightness for the HUD, and I was always wondering, why the heck isn't my HUD turning on? In reality, the brightness for the symbology on the HUD is actually this knob up here, labeled SYM for symbology brightness. And so we can see, we can turn up and down the brightness of our HUD. When you have a kind of darker day out like today in the rain, it's a good thing to not have your brightness all the way turned up to high. You want to reduce that brightness a little bit, so that way you don't get lost in what's called the green haze, where your own HUD symbology is blocking um, your view of where you want to be flying the airplane. Now this HUD view in the F-16 and a lot of Air Force jets gets very, very cluttered, especially because we have the altitude or the alt altitude and airspeed tapes on the left and right of the HUD. Now you can turn these off in the F-16, and this is a standard thing that I do almost every time I hop into the F-16. You come to this switch, 
down here on the HUD control panel, just outboard of the control stick. It's this first switch right here in the top left of the HUD control panel. And I just like to turn that to the off position with a left click. Now, when we come back to the HUD, we can see we have a much, much decluttered HUD here. That's very much easier to see out of. And we simply just have the altitude and airspeed boxes, like is reminiscent to, say, the HUD on the F-18C. Next, we need to come down to this bank of switches just in front, or just to the side of the control stick. We need to turn our radar altimeter to the on position. We need to turn our FCR, or fire control radar, to the on position. And we have the right and left um, chin hard points. And so we need to turn these guys to the on position. Now we currently don't have anything on our uh, left hard point, but in the future when the harm targeting system is available for the F-16, that will occupy that left uh, cheek station underneath the intake there. So by flipping those switches, we're adding power to our radar altimeter, our fire control radar, our lightning targeting pod, and in the future, our harm targeting system. Next thing we wanna do is come back to the left-hand panel up by our left hip. We want to then, of course, make sure we turn on our master IFF to the norm position. These other switches around the IFF panel, we don't need to worry about at the moment. Um, they are not necessarily implemented too much and changing your IFF code may uh, limit the ability of aircraft around you, say on a public server, to IFF you and say, oh, you're a good guy or oh, you're a bad guy. Next thing we can do is we can come down to the lighting panel. It's definitely hard to see with track IR, but make sure you have your um, curves on your track IR set that you can see all of the panels in your F-16. We want to take our master lighting switch and throw that over into the norm position. For the lights on our wings and tail and fuselage, we'll turn those to the bright position so we can see them very, very easily in the daytime. We can also change the from flash to steady and we can also change the flickering of our anti-collision lights to different positions here, such as A, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, and that will correspond to different flickering patterns of our anti-collision lights. Alpha stands for a, a pattern that will denote the first aircraft in a flight, Bravo the second aircraft, Charlie the third aircraft, and so on. Next, we want to come back to our HUD and then look just underneath our DED and ensure that we right click and drag the pull to uncage um, button on, just below our standby ADI or attitude director indicator. On your right hand uh, MFD, by default, you have the HSD up there. In the F-16, the HSD kind of combines your HSI and your SA page. We wanna make sure that where it says XMT for emit, we want to make sure that's turned to the Link 16, so that way our jet is emitting and receiving Link 16 signals um, from friendlies aircraft around us, such as AWACS, other fighters, uh, ships, anything else that's going to have a Link 16 connection. Of course, you can just adjust the range of the um, HSD as you see fit. We can also see that our FCR is now turned on and ready to go based off of the uh, switches that we turned on just to the outboard of our throttle down here, or sorry, our control stick down there. Next, we can also scroll through our external fuel tanks and ensure that they are in fact filled up and that the ground crew did their job accordingly. We can see that we currently have the fuel quantity selector on the norm position and the fuel totalizer over here on the right hand side is showing 13,800 pounds or maybe like 13,850-ish pounds at the moment. And we can switch this over to the external wing tanks and we can see we currently have a total of about 2,500 pounds of fuel in those wing tanks. And we can bring it over to the um, external centerline tanks and see that we've got a little over maybe 1,700 pounds in the uh, center line external station. Next, we can go ahead and bring that back to the norm position and make sure that our fuel totalizer gives us back to 13.8.85, just so that way we can make sure it's all functioning correctly. Next thing that's also a good idea is to ensure that um, you have your brightness set for your um, AOA indicator to the left of the HUD, as well as your brightness set for your nose wheel steering and announciator to the right of the HUD. Next, we can go ahead and hit the nose wheel steering button 
to make sure that we get the air to air, to air fueling slash nose wheel steering caution up here and make sure that it is in fact working with the brightness. Next thing before I like to taxi, I like to just hit the return on the Dauber stick on our ISCP to come to the home page of our uh, DED and then we can adjust which steering point we want or adjust the calm frequency that we have on the um, TACAN station, all of that good stuff. Next thing we want to do is, of course, before we taxi, we can do the last thing we need to do, which is, of course, arm our ejection seat. And now we're currently ready for taxi. Now, a good idea before you actually taxi, especially in DCS, because it is easy to forget this stuff, especially before you head into combat and um, start engaging in combat with other aircraft, is to make sure you have your dispensers and RWR turned on. Very, very easy, very similar to the F-A-18, except for it's down here on the left-hand side rather than being on the center console. We want to turn on the power to the raw system. We then want to turn the mode to the manual position. We can then turn to whichever program we want. We can turn on our jammer, our RWR power, as well as the dispenser bucket power as well. We can also turn on our symbology for our HMD down here. And if we look outside the cockpit, we can see that we also have our HMD symbology. Now, if we go display management switch down long, we can turn on and off our, dis our symbology on our helmet very, very quickly and easily. Also something to keep in mind here is that green haze effect also applies to your HMD. So make sure you are adjusting the brightness to suit the time of day or the situation that you are in so that way you don't get lost in your own HMD symbology. So that's about it for starting up your F-16 and getting ready to taxi out and take off and engage in air combat in the DCS F-16C Fighting Falcon. Like I said, a lot has changed since the last cold start tutorial that I did. And um, it, like I said, it wasn't exactly my best video in the world. So I just wanted to redo this and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. If you did, please give a like and a subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Fly safe out there and stay healthy.